Hi everyone, Bill Parrish here of GTT Audio, and welcome to the channel today. I hope you're healthy and staying safe out there. Today I wanted to bring in a special guest, Dr. David Robinson, who's one of the co-owners of Positive Feedback and Editor-in-Chief. Positive Feedback is one of the largest e-zines in the industry. He's getting over 450,000 verified uh, individual hits per month. I mean, th this is massive. Positive Feedback reaches the entire globe. It's, uh, it, it's a special magazine. And David is a special guy and we're going to interview him today. I hope you enjoy it. Well, here he is, everyone. Da David Robinson of Positive Feedback. Welcome, David. Hey, how's, how's, how's it going, going Bill? It's good, good to see you, my friend. Uh, doing great, doing great. Uh, thank you for agreeing to do this Skype interview with me, and I don't know how much of an interview it'll be as opposed to just a conversation. <laughs> well, you know, of course, I'm always glad to uh, visit with you, so... You know, this is no task at all. I, I can't make it look like work, folks. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I don't go for too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll try to we'll try to keep to a time limit. But uh, you know, uh, something happened over the last twenty four hours. I've just uh, which I think can lead into this um, to this uh, conversation that we're going to have. Um, you know, I, I always tell clients uh, never pass up a free audition. You know, right. I mean, I, uh, if I'm going to offer you a cable to listen to or a DAC to listen to, you know, you should do it. Why would you, why would you pass it up? Know what's out there. And I try to take my own advice. I, I can't take it all the time because if I, if I did, I would be doing nothing but evaluating the equipment. Um, you know, and when I take on a new line, I do. I, I look at the company. I look at the products. Obviously, I need to know it sounds good. So you know, and then and then there. But there's more to it than that. There's there's the company and the people behind it. Uh, uh, right. that, that that also p plays into it. So I was offered something that was fairly interesting um, recently, and uh, I, I said, "Go ahead and ship it in." And I, I, I shipped the, this thing came here and I was listening to it uh, this morning before this. I, I gave it a day to warm up and it's, um, it's a parallel product that, that plugs into the wall in the system. Okay. But I cannot believe what it did to the system. And it mm. wasn't good. I mean, what intrigued me was how many dealers were selling this product. So the rep mm -hmm. was telling me, you know, so and so sold sold this many in the last two weeks. This guy sold this many, and and I'm mm -hmm. like, maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I should uh, jump on this thing. But mm -hmm. this thing, I, I play a couple of you know well-known uh, products, right. and. Um, you know, it's like the Defia three-cornered hat, always a great right. piece. The introduction, right. uh, the um, that the Sheffield Lab Harry James, um, right. which is a, a direct uh, directed disc, direct take, sure. no editing. Uh, very dynamic. Wow. Very dynamic, and on Sweet Georgia Brown, you got that big baritone sax that comes in, and this thing turned it into a tenor sax. <laughs> Uh, now, okay. obviously, out it goes. I tried it, right. I listened to it, and it's mm -hmm. gone. But mm -hmm. how many people actually know what music sounds like? You right. know, I, I question this. You know, what is on, on? You know, do how many people in this hobby actually go to live music? Right. You know, well, right? I, I think that's a huge problem. Uh, personally, I play the guitar myself and uh, have done a lot of concerts over the years, which not always a great experience, but I've done it. Um, and if you, if you don't know what music sounds like, if you don't know how it feels, it's, uh, particularly if you don't play an instrument at all, you've got, to, you've got to attend concerts to at least hear it and try to connect with it. 
and when you when you're a musician, the connection's almost automatic. I mean, you you feel it; it's there. Um, I agree with you 100. percent I think it's it's a great tragedy if you're so disconnected from the from the emotions and from the power of music that you can't even identify an instrument. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this thing, it, it was so obvious. I mean, you got that big baritone that I've heard a million <laughs> times, and then it turned into a tenor sax. And, and it's like, are you kidding me? It changed the tonality of the music. And then uh, on the, and then on the, the, the uh, Defia, the three-corner right. hat, I mean, you know that piece. That is a big orchestral piece. And yep. it's just a wall of sound. You've been in my place in the big room, and there's this, there's yep. this wall of density and sound. Yep. And, yep. It, and, yep. it, and it thinned it out. It thinned yep. it out. And I like to call that, that wall of sound, you know, it's mm -hmm. call it an 8K uh, or 4K projector versus, you know, I mean, and then the low level, I guess, is back the right. old tube TVs, 480i. Uh, right. right. Um, but, you know, I, I like to think of it as sound pixels, sound pixels. Uh, and this thing stripped the sound pixels out of the sound stage. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's I, I, and then I simply unplug it, put mm -hmm. my system back to how it was. I unplug it and boom, and you yeah. have body and you've got weight and you have more information. And I scratch my head and I say, the guy's bullshitting me, <laughs> or why? Or or are all these uh, these dealers of uh, names he dropped are their customers deaf? Because why would you? Uh, you know, I, I I just don't get it. And and maybe that is maybe that's a problem with our uh, with our hobby and our industry is there's enough there's not enough people going to unamplified concerts to actually understand what real instruments sound like. Well, and I also think, you know, you have to remember that you, you in your reference listening room have, that's the single finest listening room I've heard in this country well, is your listening room. Um, it's exceptionally revealing. And so if you add something to the system, you know, personally, I've been a strong believer in system synergy for decades. I once had an argument over the phone with Harry Pearson about it because, believe it or not, Harry Pearson thought that system synergy, that synergy was bullshit. Uh, and I disagreed completely. I said, look, Harry, you change a thing, you change everything. Uh, you put something into a system, and that's not the same system anymore. Um, and that can be for good or evil. Mm -hmm. Your system uh, and the kinds of systems that we have over here at Positive Feedback are going to reveal if something brings an improvement or not if it's added to the mix. Um, I don't think that everything necessarily improves stuff, and I think, frankly... An awful lot of people have systems that are on life support. Um, they may be getting a very unclear picture anyway because they have a, a synergy of dysfunctional elements that when you go in the room and they say, doesn't that sound great? You're trying to find some nice way of saying, no, it does not sound great. Uh, I've been in those positions, and they strain your diplomacy to the maximum. So, uh, does it surprise me? No, I've had I've had uh, components that I've brought in that I just shipped back and said, no, no review, because in my system, in this combination, it it was it either made no difference or much more likely it actually it actually harmed the sound. Uh, you know your system intimately, that room intimately, like I know my listening room intimately. Oh, and, you know, in, in seconds you can tell if something's thumbs up or thumbs down. So, no, it does surprise me a bit. It is too bad that we don't have more people who have, the word I use for it is sensibilities. Everybody's got, you're born with senses. But it takes an education 
to turn your senses into sensibilities. It takes experience. And you've got to be listening to the instruments. You've got to know what live sounds like. You have to have a sense. By long practice, you train your senses to know the stuff that's good from the stuff that isn't. Yes. Okay? Well, that's what you know. I was saying about do people actually go and hear music? Do they know what it sounds like, or are they just into equipment? I mean, I know yeah. you know me. I'm at Carnegie Hall. I go to the Met. Uh, I, I, I've heard live music with you in this country yeah. and overseas. We've gone overseas. To, overseas yeah. We've yeah. gone to classical concerts before. Yeah, that was yeah, that was wonderful, man. That was. We we, uh, we went to music for Ryan and to the opera hall and uh, yeah, 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 yeah I mean that that was fabulous I mean we go and hear music we know what it is and I've been yeah. to your room I've uh, I you know you do have amazing sound and yeah. uh, you know and you not, have, you not have, the you, biggest room but it does sound well it sounds yeah. very good very good and that's that's what yeah that's what an education will lead to. You invest in the music. I mean, I look at the I look at the wall of LPs behind you. I've got walls of LPs over here. Um, that's the kind of investment you make. You you listen a lot, but you also then the thing about the audio arts is we can have these wonderful, unrepeatable experiences with our recordings. Yeah. So you listen to a great LP, it may actually put you in a better place than being at a live concert. The live concert acts as a constant check. Yeah, it should be a, a reference for tonality, if nothing else. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because you're not having to... That's no tweaking going on here. Um, yeah, you're, pro yeah, you're probably putting up with some sound reinforcement, but that's okay. But the, the thing that you want to do is you, you begin to learn the great recordings then. You learn the great, the great labels, the great recording engineers, the great artists, uh, the great symphonies. You know? And as you study that, as you spend years and years and years doing it, um, you reach a point of, you know, if you're paying attention, you reach a point of beginning to really get the feel for that real thing. And... You're not just hanging earbuds off your ears, and you're not just listening to to cheap car stereo, um, and you're not just listening to to what's what passes as pop these days. Uh, and and frankly, I do a lot of listening. You know, when I stream Cobuzz, when I stream Title, I'll listen to you know here's the latest and greatest from, and, and some of it's really good. And some of it's just appalling. Yeah, yeah, I listen yeah. to it. And I think, I think, man, this has gone straight past my ears and over into the round file. Well, you know, you mentioned the wall of LPs here, and I've seen your wall of LPs. But what I'm most impressed with at your place is that wall of SACDs. <laughs> I know <laughs> you, yeah, you, we, you yeah, were you we, were we got you were the probably the uh, one of the first, very first, and biggest champions of DSD SACD. And now in the streaming arena, we call it DSD um, out there. And and yeah. uh, you know, I'm I'm converted. I definitely believe in it. I feel it's the highest resolution, the most natural, and the uh, the most analog feel. Um, but yeah, what where's where's DSD today? Where's it going? What do you think? It's a uh, it's really interesting. We first I first came out in the fall, late fall of 1998. Uh, at positive feedback when we're still paper and ink, saying this is an actual advance. I'd been invited by Mold Fidelity in the olden days to come down, and we were the first high-end audio magazine to be allowed to listen to the demonstration. And I mean, it was a demonstration. There were all sorts of luminaries in there. Ed Meitner was in there. Tim DeParacini was in there. Ayataka Nishio was in there. David Kawakami was in there. Um, all of the people who had helped to bring DSE together as a started out as an archival format. 
It was a way for Sony to take their acquisition of Columbia Records and save it because hundreds of millions of dollars worth of recordings. Uh, they knew that Red Book CD level was not an archival medium. That's 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 an insufficient format. So they come up with what we call single DSD, 64 times CD and one bit, not 16 bits. Um, well, all that Scott Franklin, a good a good audio bud of mine and a major engineer himself, and I had to do was sit and listen to. We listened to a direct master tape versus DSD playback through Ed Meitner's system. And we could just A-B it. Blew my mind. It was the first time I'd heard an actual improvement in audio in 40 years. Um, this was the first time that there had been an advance towards what we would call higher fidelity. And that made a huge difference to me. Since then, of course, SACD, Sony muffed that. I mean, they just muffed their handling of it. Uh, they should have converted to a one inventory system. You know, if you're buying an optical disc, it's a hybrid SACD. It'll play on a CD player. It'll play on an SACD player. They didn't do that. Uh, they muffed it. Yeah, they no, it's strange. They, they didn't do it, but everyone else did. It was exactly. It was I mean, they <laughs> orphaned it. Uh, what the big breakthrough came when we were able to take DSD and decouple it from the optical. As soon as you decouple it, decouple it from the Orange Book standard of SACD, well, now you can start turning up the clock on DSD. Yeah, the files get bigger, of course, but hard disks are cheap, and you could increase the resolution, which was really important not so much from a frequency response standpoint, but because as you went to double DSD, you know, two times, um, when you went to four times, and so it would be the original 2.8224 megahertz of single became 5.6 megahertz of double, became 11.2 megahertz of quad, and now we're up to 22 plus megahertz of eight times DSD um, when when you do that the main advantage is you're able to use gentler filtering gentler noise shaping so that you're not having to really in any way brick wall the sound you're not having to strangle the sound you're not having to say whoops here's ultrasonic You've kicked the ultrasonic noise way out over where bats can't hear it. And you can use very much gentler filtering, and the results are startling. Uh, NativeDSD.com is releasing. You can go out right now and purchase eight times DSD recordings, and they'll knock you out. Quad, frankly, quad DSD is indistinguishable from Master Tape. I've, I've done the listening tests. Yeah, I uh, think quad is quad is very special. That's for sure. I've got uh, you, know, you you want to for those folks who who really want master tape or mic feed, go buy yourself any one of many hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of um, recordings, and you can get them in places like nativedsd.com. You, you can find them at Acoustic Sounds with Chad. You can find them at High Definition tra uh, Tape Transfers with Bob Wittrack. You can find them with Cookie Maranko at Blue Coast Records. I mean, and they've got great music, reference level music, um, that will allow audiophiles to develop a collection of recordings. If you're at Quad DSD, which most stacks these days support, the sports DSD, it'll support that by USB. And so you you listen to that. That will tune your ears. You can't now if if there's a problem, you have to go back and take a look at your system. Yeah. You know, this is this is where we're no longer when you were listening to CDs, I yeah, I know you have an experience like this. When you listen to CTs you can end up going in, down some very dark rabbit holes trying to fix the sound. 
because you're trying to retune with hardware what's broken at the recording level. And so by going to like a quad quad DSD reference grade recordings, you'll end up you'll end up getting the righteous signal. So now you can start going in the right direction, which is why guys like you exist to help people. You know, you're really there as 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 editor in chief of positive feedback. I and our team, we're there as advanced scouts. We'll tell you what we think about things. Um, but you, as a distributor and as a dealer, are there to actually act as a counselor. Yes, a absolutely, absolutely. I mean, when, when you're you when you're doing that kind of thing, what do you have to go through with most of your clients? I mean, what's what's it like for you to act as a consultant this way to people? Well, most of them are very very uh, receptive. Of course, I, there's a few that know it all, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 usually they're way off base. Right. There, there's a few that can uh, you know that can certainly uh, teach me a thing or two, and uh, right. but uh, you know most of them are very receptive, and we've been uh, you know teaching a lot of people about DSD and about streaming and setting things up. Uh, we've been doing right. a whole lot of digital uh, the last year or so with the Moa right. Moa uh, Tambaki DAC and. The Oral mm -hmm. Streamer and Room. Well, I got to tell you that Mola Mola Tambaki, don't get me started on that. That that is such an unreal piece of work. Well, you gave it a you gave it a Brutus Award, so we know you love it, and we well, love it. Well, I you know, I don't know what I don't know what Bruno is smoking, <laughs> but more people got to be smoking it because because he's he's turning out magic. I mean, it's it's really. Such a brilliant sound. It, uh, if you get up there and you're listening to DSD anyway, you're gonna, you're heading in a good direction. You're heading in. That's that's a direction. It's not to say that DSD can't be a, a super highway for crap, because if you, sure. if that's what you do with it, of course it's going to show. It's it's going to brutally show it. But um, you're heading down a good direction and. As you and I both know, man, this is the golden age of audio oh, right yeah. now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when anybody thinks, thinks that the golden age of audio was way back when really needs to go out and seriously get their head examined. Yeah, we're doing because... some serious stuff with what you just talked about with the DSD stuff. Um, as far as some of the reissue records that are out today, what Chad's doing with QRP, what Ying Tan <laughs> is doing with Org. Uh, right. I, I mean, this is, uh, you know, and his Groove Note label, this is right. amazing stuff. David, well, uh, unfortunately, we're out of time, but this is, this is, <laughs> this has flowed so great and so it's, it's gone by so quick, but I don't, uh, I know these, uh, people watching YouTube, you know, they right. can, there's an attention span there. So uh, oh, sure, uh, sure, what, sure. what we're going to do, though, if you'll agree to it, because this is too good and we didn't cover half of what I'd love to do, is invite right. you back in a couple of weeks and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do it again. Oh, well, yeah, I'd love to do it, Bill, because uh, there are a lot of things to talk about. When you realize, yeah, we are in the golden age. It's never been better in any direction, in any technology, for anything. It's... It's an amazing time to be alive and to be loving music and to be uh, seeing what, what high-end audio can do because it's all about, this for me, and I know you know it's true, and I know it's true, is high-end audio has reached a point now where it can really connect, connect your soul to the transforming power of music. Yes, it changes your life permanently and in a really great, great direction. Um, and so, I'd like, yeah, I would love to explore more of that with you. So, sure, good. Let's uh, let's let's reconnect in a couple of weeks and get it done. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You take, take care, care, my friend. Goodbye. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. It was very insightful with some of the things that David touched on. 
what we'd like you to do, we need your help. We need you to like, share, subscribe. We want to grow this channel. Again, like it, share it, subscribe, comment below. I've been doing really good getting back to everybody. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.